Okay, so I'm not gonna list out every new feature of iOS 18 because honestly, there's only a few that I care about. And the first is the control center, and this is where it starts to get interesting. First, we can now add new controls to the control center by pressing and holding anywhere on the screen and then pressing add a control. And there's a ton more controls to choose from and you can even add shortcuts, more on that in a second. We can also change the size and move them around and not just in individual slots, but also in different windows. Because there's now multiple windows in the control center. By default, we have one for favorites, another dedicated to music, another for HomeKit, and the last one for connectivity stuff, like cellular data, airplane mode, etc. And what's really cool here is that we can move between different pages immediately when we swipe down. So if I exit out of the control center and swipe down from the top, I can move to different pages in the same swipe without lifting my finger. And you might have notice that I have another window here which is my shortcuts page. This is where I keep my most used shortcuts. And to add shortcuts to the control center, we just press the plus icon or hold anywhere on the screen, scroll down till you see shortcuts and then press on it. Then once it's on the control center, tap on it again and then choose your shortcut. And now you can trigger them straight from here. And by the way, I went over all of these shortcuts in another video that you can find right here as well as in the description box below. There's also a HomeKit page and I can basically control every light in the house from here. It takes a while to get used to this new change, but I'm already sold on this. I think it's a huge upgrade over the old one and this will be opened up to developers via the API. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what third party controls are gonna show up here. All right, so every now and then Apple releases a standalone app that actually replaces a paid app. Last year, it was the journal app, which completely replaced day one for a ton of people. And this year we have passwords, which is basically a first party password manager. And we've actually had this for a while. It was just buried under the settings menu, but now we have a dedicated app for it. And there's a couple of new features that come with it, like 2FA and pass keys. But the question here is whether or not this could replace a standalone password manager like 1Password or Dashlane. Because the truth is, this can do a lot of the same stuff that a dedicated password manager does. It generates super secure passwords and remembers them for you. You can save more than just passwords like Wi-Fi credentials and codes. And you can share it with others as long as they're also in the Apple ecosystem. And you can even use a browser extension if you're not on Safari, but that's kind of it. Whereas if you use a password manager like 1Password, you can store credit card information, passports, IDs, software licenses, and really anything because you can also just create a secured note and put whatever you want in there. There's also another huge limitation here because when you add a password on Apple Passwords, you can only add a username or email as well as a note. But some services require you to have both a username and an email, and you can't do that here in Apple Passwords. Whereas if I open up a new entry for one password, I can add a bunch of different fields. And it also works across all platforms, so you don't have to be tied in the Apple ecosystem. And you can also share your passwords with anyone, even if they're not Apple users. But the main reason why I can't even consider moving to this is because I really don't like the idea of having all my eggs in one basket when it comes to something as important as this. Because if you're locked out of your iCloud, all of a sudden you're also locked out of every account that you own because you can't log into Apple passwords independently. It's tied to your iCloud. And maybe I'm a little paranoid, but for me, that's a huge deal breaker. I always prefer to use first party apps when possible, but this might just be the only case where a third party app makes more sense, at least in terms of security. All right, so if you're watching this channel, then chances are you're the tech support person in your family. And if that's the case, I have great news for you. Because now when you FaceTime someone who also has iOS 18, you can share your screen or ask to see theirs. So if I press to share my screen, the other person will have access to it and they can draw on their device and it'll show up in mine. And better yet, they can take full control of it. This is great if you always get those calls where someone's asking you to troubleshoot something on their phone. And if you're wondering why I'm not showing it in action here, that's because we don't yet have this feature available in the EU. It should be coming later, I hope, but we don't yet have it. All right, so the Photos app also got a huge revamp, but I actually like it. So now it's basically one long page. And we have this filter option here at the bottom, which lets us filter by different things. I can choose to not see screenshots or only see videos or favorites. 
But what really stands out to me is the search functionality. Because now we have a search icon here on top and if we tap it, we can describe what it is we're looking for and it'll show us results better than it ever did before. And you can be very specific with it. Or if your search is too broad, it'll give you suggestions to help you narrow it down. Another great thing here is that you can now customize what's shown in the bottom. And maybe I'm a little boring, but I don't really care to see different highlights from past trips and stuff like that. So I can swipe left and disable every single one of those except for shared albums and utilities. So now on my main page, I only see my shared libraries as well as this new utilities feature that lets me filter for specific things like receipts or handwriting. Overall, I think this one's a positive change. It'll take a while to get used to the new layout, but the search functionality alone makes it worth it. And there's also a ton of other small quality of life improvements. The Messages app is finally getting a send later feature that lets you schedule texts to be sent up to two weeks in advance. We can also now lock any app with Face ID by long pressing on an app and tapping Require Face ID. And if we want to, we can also hide it, in which case that app will no longer show on the home screen nor on the Spotlight search. Instead, it'll be in the app library under a folder that says Hidden and Requires Face ID to unlock. I have no use case for this, but it's nice to have it as an option. And there's another feature that's definitely cool, but I don't think I'm ever gonna use it, and that's Math Notes. So now, if you go on the calculator app and press the calculator icon, you can then choose to go into Math Notes, where you can write down equations and it will calculate the result for you. It also does a bunch of other features, and honestly, this would have been awesome to have back in school, but nowadays, I don't see myself using it once. There's also a ton of accessibility features. There's eye tracking that lets you control your phone with your eyes. It uses the front facing camera to see where you're looking and you can navigate your phone by staring at a certain point for a few seconds. I'm not gonna use it, but this is amazing for people with disabilities. And there's also a feature called vehicle motion cues that will track which direction the vehicle you're in is moving and move those dots in that same motion. I'm always the one driving, so I can't speak for this, but my fiance has tried and she says it worked for her. But what I can speak for is the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an online platform where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. With Brilliant, you don't just memorize things, you become a better problem solver and build up your critical thinking skills. One of my favorite things about Brilliant is that they offer structured learning paths, which combine multiple courses into a curriculum that you can follow. Brilliant just released a new course that I really enjoyed and highly recommend, and it's called Designing Programs, and it takes you through the process of programming a well-known game from scratch. And just like all Brilliant's courses, this one is also interactive, which means you'll be actively coding as you learn. Plus, it shows you the output of your code in real time so you can visually see where you went wrong and become better at identifying and fixing errors in your code. And this is just one of the many courses that Brilliant adds every single month. There's always something new to learn. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash from Sergio. And if you decide to stick with it, you'll also get 20% off an annual subscription. All right, so with iOS 18, when you press and hold anywhere on the screen and tap the edit button on the top left, you can then press customize to change how your home screen looks. You can change the size of the apps, whether you want them to be in light or dark mode, and you can even change the icon colors to any color that you want. And there's even a color picker so that you can match it with a certain color on your background. And this might be a hot take since a lot of people seem to like this, but I don't know, I'm not even slightly excited about it. I guess it's always nice to have options, especially since Android users have had this for years, but I don't see myself changing anything here. And I've seen some home screens after people moved stuff around and played with the colors, but I've yet to see one that I think looks better or even as good as a default option. The only thing that makes a difference for me is that we can finally change the buttons on the lock screen. Because now we can choose to have different options here other than the flashlight and the camera. I like to keep the flashlight here, but on my left one, I set it so that it opens up my task manager, which is Todoist. This just cuts a few extra steps if I want to quickly capture a task, but that's kind of it. There's also a ton of other customization features like fancy text animations when sending a text. You can also react to different messages with different emojis. And there's a few other small things like little squeeze animations when you press the volume buttons, which is nice, I guess. But the biggest update is still to come, which is all the AI features that are going to come to iOS and macOS later this year. 
I can't wait to see how that's going to impact my productivity and different workflows. And I'll be sharing that on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed. Bear in mind though that iOS 18 is still in beta, but I think it's at a point where as long as you don't expect complete perfection and what you do on your phone is not mission critical, you're probably good to update. I can only speak for myself, but I've had it since day one of the public beta and I haven't had a single issue. But on the other hand, if you've waited this long and there's nothing here that really makes you want to update, then you might as well wait for the full release at this point, as that's probably going to come in mid-September. But if you do want to upgrade and you're not yet on the beta program, just go to beta.apple.com, sign in with your iCloud, then go to Settings, General, Software Update, and enable Beta Updates. And now you should see it there. Alright, so these are my favorite iOS 18 features, and if you want to see my favorite iOS apps, you can find that in this video right here. And I'll see you there.